Parents, what is your kid doing or wearing that you hope is just a phase? Not a parent, but my nephew pretty much lives with us, so close enough. He's five and is right in the midst of his picky eating stage. It's so annoying because we'll be eating one thing and then he'll insist on eating something else and he's hardcore, so he'll literally starve himself rather than eat what we're eating, so we usually give in. But sometimes we're eating a food he likes, but because he doesn't want that food that day, he'll try to claim he doesn't like it. I don't like pizza though. We ate pizza yesterday. Yeah, but I was just pretending because I don't like pizza. I like pasta. He's a great kid, polite and kind, but sometimes I kind of want to dropkick him a few miles because he's getting on my nerves. On a related topic, my baby brother was also the hardcore picky eater type. For years, he survived on little more than pasta with ketchup and sunshine. He was a scrawny, short little dude even for his age. Everyone was worried he was stunting his growth. One night, my parents finally broke. My dad laid a piece of steak the size of his thumbnail on his plate and said he wasn't having any dessert until he finished it. No problem, he'd happily go without dessert. Upping the ante, he wouldn't be allowed to watch The Simpsons or leave the table until the tiny steak was eaten. My brother was prepared to accept those terms. My dad grabbed his wallet, pulled out a $5 bill, and told him if he ate it, he'd get to eat dessert, leave the table, not have to help with dishes, and could keep the $5 if he ate the teeny morsel. My brother wouldn't bulge. That $5 was up to two $5, two $5, and 10, two fives, a 10, and a 20, Another 20. The little dude sat there with $100 in cash, five cookies, cake, and ice cream, and an uneaten steak all piled around the placemat for three hours. It would have been longer, but it was a school night and bedtime is important. Now that he's all grown up, he's the tallest and strongest of the lot, eats anything, and is in the army. I know now if he's ever captured, he sure as hell won't talk under duress. Story 2. I guess it's more like his attitude, but he's really materialistic and status conscious as much as a six-year-old can be. He's always comparing his stuff to other people's stuff. I don't really understand where he gets it from because I'm not like that at all. On the one hand, it's cool if he's willing to work for the nice things he wants. On the other hand, it's not cool if he's so obsessed that it's taking over parts of his brain, you know? He only wants to play sports to have the most gear because he likes the gear, not necessarily the sport. He has to have the nicest shoes. If his friend has some cool thing, he must also have that cool thing. He's the one who leaves the toy store saying, that's really cool you got me these things, but why didn't you get me this too? Yes, I've tried putting everything back and leaving the toy store. This just seems to be the way he is right now. He also thinks he's an expert after spending two minutes learning about something. That is really infuriating. No, you're not an expert on sharks because we read half of a kid's book on sharks. He also likes to be the best. No, you're not good enough to be in the NHL. You are six. Okay, yeah, you're a good skater now, but guess what? If you just sit there congratulating yourself instead of practicing, all those other guys on your Little League team will just blow by you next year. I mean, I don't say this to him. I just tell him to keep practicing. I decay. Story 3. Currently, my son, 15, keeps spending hours in the woods near my house. I don't want to hinder his individuality, but I use the parent control on his phone to track where he goes. I found this treehouse. I don't know if he built it or found it. And when I climbed up, I saw magazine papers covering the wall, yarn pinned to them, and Polaroids tacked up everywhere. The weirdest part? They were all pictures of birds, with bird feathers in the yarn, and on the floor in the corner, there was what turned out to be a jumpsuit covered with various types of feathers. I don't know why he hasn't felt comfortable talking about this. He knows I love him, and I think I know what this is about. I'll accept him whether or not he's realized he's actually a queen on the inside, provided he doesn't want to feed him like a mama bird. I thought of checking his room today after remembering this. He has a drawer full of little bones. The thing I want to be a phase is the dissecting. The rest is whatever. I could always buy him feathers and help him staple them on. Story 4. My 7-year-old son is obsessed with Michael Jackson, specifically with Smooth Criminal. He loves Minecraft and Five Nights at Freddy's too, but the MJ thing is borderline disturbing. He had a Michael Jackson birthday party, recorded videos of himself dancing in costume to Smooth Criminal, has several movies, a CD, a video game, an action figure, several costumes, and can tell you exactly what Vitiligo is. He has all of these things because I choose to enthusiastically endorse pretty much anything he does. And I figure the fastest way for something to lose its sparkle is for parents to think it's cool. Other than people thinking it is strange, his obsession has only caused public awkwardness once. 
We were out to dinner, and there was another family in the restaurant that included three teenage sons with huge, luxurious afros. The parents were interracial, and my son was open mouthed and gawking at them. The restaurant was a buffet, so there were several passes back and forth by all of us. And at one point, he whispered to me, Mom, they look like the Jackson 5. I love their hair. He genuinely admired them and innocently wanted to look at them, but we live in Southeast Texas, so I'm sure they're used to getting gawked at in public for less pleasant reasons. He's too young to understand the allegations against MJ. He just knows that people think MJ was a little strange and made up not so nice stories about him because he was famous. Story 5. I had one phase that was probably really embarrassing for my parents. This phase began when I was five and is simply known as the refusal to poop phase. I'm not sure how the refusal to poop phase came to be, but I refused to take a dump. This resulted in an ungodly amount of constipation that my mom had to send me to the doctor for. In order to get me to go, she would let me run around bare in our backyard and just hope one popped out. This phase went on for so long that my mom would make me tell her that I took a dump. I remember one time going up to my room in a crowded restaurant and saying, Mommy, I pooped. Do you want to see? I was a strange child. Another related story was about my buddy's daughter when she was a toddler. They were worried but broke and without insurance, so a doctor's visit wasn't an option. Anyway, they tried milk of magnesia, chocolate laxatives cut with regular chocolate, and yet no poop. So my buddy decides that giving her some coffee will kickstart the poop train. It did, but not before the 16-hour terror. She was a psychopath. She was all over the place. It was like a little blonde Robin Williams with no grasp of how the English language worked. I remember sitting on the couch and she ran in about seven circles, then stopped, screamed, and shook with what appeared to be a super scion rage. She then ran to the bathroom and trucker dumped and crashed out. My friend's daughter partied hard. Story 6 I'm 14. From when I was 10 to this past summer, I dressed and acted like a tomboy. I wore guys in sweatpants, baggy jeans, cargo shorts, basketball shorts, and my brother's shirts. I also hung around my brother's sports-obsessed friends. He's almost 11, just to be seen as one of the boys. My music tastes changed too. I traded One Direction and my crush on Niall, the blonde one, for bands like All Time Low and Nickelback. And I hated wearing anything remotely trendy, so I shunned high-waisted shorts and skinny jeans. I even boycotted one of my favorite stores just because their clothes started to become trashy. Now, I am perfectly fine with following trends, listening to One Direction, and dressing like a girl. I enlisted my best friend to help me learn how to dress femininely, and I love it. My, oh my god, I'm such a tomboy phase was cringeworthy, and I'm glad I am more feminine, but Nickelback still isn't that bad. Story 7 I'm not the parent, but my sister and my little brother were pretty weird kids. We went through a phase where he would constantly lick me to get on my nerves. Every day for who knows how long, you could hear me yelling, Ew! And then my parents yelling, Danny, stop licking your sister. They had to yell this in public for Christ's sake. We used to get so many stares. Then there was his bear phase, except for his cowboy hat and red cowboy boots. He was a tiny little baby at this point, three at the oldest. At any chance, he would take off all his clothes, except his boots and hat, and run around free-balling for the whole house to see. One day, my mom took a Polaroid picture of him. Cut to some time later, I'm in elementary school, right? I'm sitting in class, and suddenly there was a buzzing over the intercom. Samikins, please come to the library. I immediately know I must be in trouble, so I go down there, and the librarian calls me over to the desk. She tells me I had returned a book not too long ago, and that I had left something in there that she guessed I had used as a bookmark. She then slides a picture face down across a table. The picture was of my baby brother in his red boots and cowboy hat, bent over with his bum peeking out from between his legs. It was probably the most embarrassing I ever was in my entire childhood. Story 8 My mom would say my Power Ranger phase never ended. I started when it first started airing in the UK, and I just never stopped. I don't like the seasons much after Wild Force, but the old Saban seasons are still awesome. I never saw what the big deal was. I liked a TV show, but it created so much drama. I still don't see why I should have grown out of it when I was 10 or 11. The show matured with me. I still enjoy watching the old episodes occasionally. They are fun. On my tomboy stage, mom made me wear her friend's son's hand-me-downs. Being a girl, she used to get so angry at me for wearing boys' clothes all the time when that's all I had. When I finally could wear girl clothes, mom made shopping so awful and told me everything looked bad, so I just stayed in my big baggy old clothes. At least if I didn't try, the comments I got didn't really bother me. 
Mom was so ashamed of me it would make me walk away from her when we went shopping. Story 9. I went through a phase of getting way too into movies. After seeing Zathura, I asked for the board game. It was made as a counterpart to the movie, and I was quite disappointed that the pieces didn't move like themselves like in the movie for Christmas. Made my reading buddy, my elementary school had this thing where they would take the older kids, grades 4 to 5, and pair them up with K to 2nd graders, and the elders would read picture books with the youngers. Drew me a replica of the movie poster. Thanks, Matt. It was pretty damn good. Got a space comforter like Danny's in the movie, and probably declared Josh Hutcherson my favorite actor and made it my personal mission to see all of his movies. After seeing Shark Boy and Lava Girl, I made a dream journal and was very upset when they didn't come true. I asked for a rocket ship alarm clock like the one Max had in the movie. I now realize just how terrible it was. After seeing Spy Kids 2, I became obsessed with spies and went around wearing three digital watches on my left wrist as spy watches. After I saw Star Wars 1 with Darth Maul for the first time, my dad and I constantly reenacted the scene where DM passed away, which consisted of my dad and I fighting with lightsabers and me eventually pushing him into the bottomless pit which was really a large circle on the basement floor outlined in duct tape. I was six, so this was around 2005. All right, so far so good, taking a quick pause at Star Wars, never a bad thing. And you seem to be enjoying the content so far, so while you're here, please do hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any more hilarious but totally relatable stories just like this one. Here's story 10. My 21-month-old has become a little bully. She hits everyone, even her two-month-old little sister. Nothing helps. She scratches, pinches, slaps, and pulls hair. Last week, we caught her pinning my four-year-old niece down and pulling her hair. She also hits people with nearby objects, phones, toys, water bottles, etc. This isn't limited to kids. She hits adults too, if she's in a bad mood. My mother-in-law once told her no when she was doing something bad. She casually stopped what she was doing and walked over to the couch. A minute later, she grabbed the phone and rushed her with it, trying to hit her. She had to be about 15 to 18 months old when this happened. It was like she plotted revenge and tried to sneak up on her to hit her. It's strange because she can be the funniest and sweetest girl sometimes, and at other times, she gets angry and aggressive. I have no idea where this comes from, but I really hope this is a phase. Story 11 me and my brothers were relatively normal. Legos, cartoons, superheroes, annoying educational children shows, and we grew out of them no later than eight. But my sisters were weird and lasted forever. When she was four or five, she saw the spirit stallion of the Cameron movie with Matt Damon as the voice of the horse, and she became obsessed. She watched that movie at least three times a day, back to back to back to back, and then she convinced herself that she was a horse and refused to walk on two legs. She galloped through the house on all fours with her hands and feet, mind you, not hands and knees. She also didn't respond to her name. She said her name was Spirit and she would only respond to that. This happened until she was at least 10. Then from 3 to 9, she was obsessively tying things around other things. Several times I would walk into a room to find out that she had tied her jump rope to the poor defenseless family dog in a chair. She tied string around doorknobs, shoes, faucets, chairs, the dog, her own fingers, and her neck, twice, and other appendages. Those are the weirdest I've got, and they're still weird. I like to tease her about them, and she would get super mad at me. Story 12. Not really a phase, but still one of those moments. Okay, so when I was in primary school, it was like year one or two, my dad got the snip. I discovered this by jumping on his lap, after which he keeled over in pain. I questioned him and he basically told me a simplified version of what had been done to his manly parts. I thought this was fascinating. I proceeded to school the next day and told the entire class about it and we got an early insight into how certain body parts worked. Of course, my teacher was mortified, but seeing as they knew the kind of people that my parents are, they were really relieved that it was me and not a different child. Story 13. Child here, it would probably be my recent, I think I'm mental phase. I was depressed, according to my personal definition, and I hated everything around me. I didn't trust anyone around me. My parents were quite intrusive in my life. I hated that too. I later got this maniac laugh, one that sounded like I was insane. One that sounded like I was insane and enjoying it. It got to the point where I was 101% convinced that I was mentally ill. I began to talk to myself as well. Yes, I did hurt myself too. When my parents came in, sometimes they would find me under the bed in a fetal position, muttering to myself and giggling. 
Other times I would be sleeping at the bottom of my wardrobe with my face wrapped in newspaper and my body contorted in weird positions. Parents probably felt more scared than awkward. Story 14. Less phase, more cautionary tale that children repeat what they say. So I have red hair. My mom had black brown hair and my dad's was light brown blonde. I clearly look like both of my parents, but it's not immediately apparent where the hair comes from. I spent most of my childhood hearing, look at your red hair, where did you get all that red hair? My parents would joke with their families that it must have been the milkman. This would get all sorts of laughs every time. So flash forward to me being three or four, parents are having a house party with some important people from dad's office. I'm trying to be on my best behavior since this is the first time I'm allowed at a grown-up party. Someone comes over, crouches down, and does the whole, you have red hair speech. I proudly proclaim, it's from the milkman to everyone within earshot. Story 15. My daughter decided she was going to pee standing up like her brothers. I told my wife, you're up. My youngest boy liked to tell people about his secret bone for a while. He also decided that when he was three to tell black people they were poop colored. I had to squash that one quickly because of my wife's face the first time. I sat at a fundraiser table with the parents of the kid my oldest son charged in school after we had small talk for about an hour before. Luckily, it was between the first and second times. We never hit our kids, but for some reason, at around four, my eldest son decided that he would yell, don't hit me, when he got in trouble at stores, but not at home. Not awkward, but fun. My daughter was bald and very small at two. She was also smart and had a five-year-old brother. So at two, she spoke in full sentences. It freaked a bunch of people out at stores to see this baby talking like that, like the creepy little girl in Dune. Story 16. This is something my kids have started doing that I desperately want to stop. My daughter is seven and my son is four. We live across the street from a shopping center and to get there, we have to cross two crosswalks. My wife and I made the mistake of telling the kids that we had to wait for the white man to flash before we could cross. No big deal, no incidents. I didn't think anything of it. It was simply a matter of fact. Then my friends come to town and stay with us. We all decide to take the kids into the shopping center to get something to eat. We get to the crosswalk and my kids, I can't remember which, say something like, wait, we have to wait for the white man. He'll tell us to cross. My friends both lose it and my kids start hamming it up, saying stuff like, the white man is great. And you know, that sort of thing. Keep in mind that it's nice out and cars are close with their windows down so they can hear us. My wife and I are mortified. Now, every time we get to the crosswalk, my kids start yelling about the white man. We're trying to get them to stop. Story 17. My sister was a truly odd child. She was peeing in bowls in her closet, wearing every article of clothing she owned at the same time and using the F word at the age of two. But the best was her klepto phase. At two years old, she used to sneak into my parents' bedroom in the middle of the night and steal the spare change off of my dad's side table. Weird, but no big deal. Then we went to my cousin's wedding, which was out of town. The reception was at my cousin's parents' house while the kids were just running around. When it was time to leave, we couldn't find my sister. My dad finally found her in a closet, powdering her face with some old lady's unmentionables. My dad just picked her up and carried her to the car. When we got back to the hotel, she asked him for a cup. He gave her one of those styrofoam hotel cups, and next thing we know, it's full to the brim with Israeli money that she had smuggled out of their house in her frickin' diaper. My dad made her return it and apologize the next day, so that was pretty awkward. She was a weird kid. Story 18. Lying, but in a really incompetent way. She's nearly three and has started trying to get out of doing stuff by making the most outrageous and clearly untrue statements like, you can't brush my hair, I haven't got a head, and I can't put my shoes on, I'm a box and boxes don't have feet, etc. I try not to just laugh in her face, but it's difficult. A friend's kid also did this. Here's how the story went. When I explained what a lie was over the course of three days, he understood it but continued to choose to lie. I told him if he lied to me again, I would lie to him, make him sad like he made me, and he would cry. Long story short, I hyped up this ice cream for hours. Hours. I said there were cookies in it, candy, etc. I got some ice cream for myself and ice cream for him. I sat down with mine. I told him I forgot his. I came out with ice, soaked graham crackers and water in a bowl. Him, this isn't my ice cream. Where's my ice cream? Me, oh, I lied. Him, you lied to me? Wah! Two years later, I have a very respectful boy who is the most empathetic six-year-old ever.
These stories just prove that parenting is one hell of a ride. If you like to take your listening to the next level, please go over to the next video. Parents, when did you realize your kid was a monster? Story one is unbelievable, but also super cute. I'll see you there, and thank you for watching this one.